Good evening. Thank you for giving up your evening to be with us tonight. Uh, Ryan, when do you actually think the election will be? I think it will be November or December because that's ultimately the default. In fact, the Prime Minister should be saying that's the default five years from the 2019 election. Mm. And, you know, I think Rishi wants more time. He wants to show that the economy is turning a corner and the forecasts seem to suggest inflation will come down, interest rates are likely to come down, which will help particularly mortgage holders, and taxes are also likely to come down a little as well. And I think as Although the tax burden, as we discussed with Bob Seeley earlier, is continuing to rise. Correct. And relative to many years ago, the tax burden is higher, but relative to the more immediate term, it's coming down. And I think the government is likely to make more progress on both legal immigration because of some of the measures they've announced, particularly around dependence, but also on irregular migration as well. Okay. So I think he wants to show more success. And at the end of the day, he's a meritocrat. He believes if he works harder, he'll show people that he's right for the job. Um, my own opinion is I think it's probably too late. The mood has changed so uh, aggressively against the Tories. You wanted to come in there a moment. Well, I just wanted, will he not actually get penalised for dragging it out? Will there not come a point where there's a critical mass of frustration and just annoyance that it's carrying on if you that will actually have a negative impact If you were this. a Tory strategist who yeah. thought it was all over, then actually you would advise Rishi Sunak to go as early as possible because the mood is so anti-Tory. The longer you leave it, more likely it is to go on. But if you were a strategist who thinks there's still a narrow chance of Tory victory, you'd say go as long as possible to show that he can turn things around. Kat, do you think Rishi Sunak deliberately mentioned a time frame today to puncture Sir Keir Starmer's It definitely speech? has that feel, doesn't it? And it kind of reminds me a bit, we were talking about uh, conference season um, in the green room before we came on, and, and that reminded me a bit of breaking the convention there. The Conservatives repeatedly went out on the airwaves during Labour's party conference uh, to talk about what was happening in Israel, no doubt an important thing, but it did have the added uh, benefit to the Conservatives of knocking the Labour Party conference off the agenda for a bit. And the problem that I think Keir Starmer has, and, and he sort of was articulating it today in the, the sort of the nuanced um, approach that he was trying to take in terms of not wanting to tread heavily on people's shoulders, not wanting to intrude, trying to make politics a bit more quiet for people to get, get on with their lives. That is a, a message that I think resonates in a lot of focus groups, but it's a difficult one to sell in what the headlines. What does it mean? I mean, what does that mean? The, the wording was we, to tread politics to tread lightly. What does that mean, Stephen? Well, so I remember in the 2019 election, I was, you know, out and about, as, as all of us were, you know, either covering or fighting that election, uh, and talked to this woman and said, you know, I said, oh, yeah, how are you voting? So I'm a vote conservative. Said, oh, cool, yeah, we'll talk about it. And she said, oh, I want that woman off the telly. And I was like, who is she talking about? And I realised that, actually, she meant the BBC's then political editor, Laura Koonsberg, because she was sick of hearing about Brexit all the time, right? And that, and that was the thing, but that was the thing that the, the Conservatives kind of yeah. promised last time, basically, was actually yeah. an end to the noise. Yeah. And since 2019, a lot has happened, quite a lot of noise has happened. So I think what Keir Starmer is essentially, he's kind of weaponising his own dullness in a way. He's yeah. going, look, under me, you know, you're not, there's not going to be parties, there's not going to be continual arguments about politics, there's not going to be crisis after crisis. Now, of course, some of those crises aren't the Conservative Party's fault. Covid and the invasion of Ukraine aren't the Conservative Party's fault. But, of course, what Keir Starmer is able to do is he's able to exploit the two crises which very much were their fault, Partygate and the Liz Truss experiment, and that's what he's really saying, isn't he? He's saying, under me, politics will be orderly again. Which, which, which allows some critics to say, but you're just not being bold enough, Sir Keir Starmer. Yeah, I mean, it's how do you make dullness exciting? really. And he's and there's a complicated message also he's trying to get across, I think, which is the way politics works at the moment uh, is not fit for purpose. It, the, 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 the whole system has seized up. There's no other country in the world that's had, you know, five home secretaries in five years and ten housing ministers in ten years and seven education ministers in eight years. And, you know, if that was a company, we'd withdraw our custom from it, really, because it sounds dodgy. And that's what's happened. Plus, more and more people are waking up to the fact that communities, especially those outside of London, uh, are, there's no connection between national government and local government. And local government is seen as a, a kind of, um, you know, a, 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 an also ran and, a, and something not to think about. Whereas, in fact, lots of the major issues like social care, health and so on are, are foisted onto local government, with no, but with no resources. 
and, and that's what people are feeling on the ground. Uh, the system is broken. And I think he's trying to articulate that a that actually doesn't cost money as such. It, it's more about reorganising and making things more, making parts of the country and parts of government talk to one another. I do, yeah. think, I do think Keir Starmer needs to be careful, though, because when he says mm. tread lightly, I think if you see politics as a form of entertainment, it has been very volatile. Yes. But if politics yeah. is about government helping you yes. and supporting you, you don't want to end up sounding laissez-faire and actually no, government I'm, treading I'm, lightly. I'm, I'm, and I would say it, the problem it? for Keir yeah. is that, you, you know, actually there are some slight differences in particular policy areas, but generally he's keeping quite close to the Tory line. Go ahead, Kat. Well, I think it's just a reflection of the fact that most people do want the politicians to stop, get off their TV, go back to doing their job and allow them to go back doing their job as well. Most people don't want to spend their days obsessing or knowing the first names of politicians. They just want them to get on and do the job. And if they're not getting on and doing the job because they're embroiled in party gate inquiries or what mm. have you, then that's part of the problem that's why we are one of the reasons why we have so many issues because churn in ministerial roles and also the perception that they're not actually getting on with the job at hand but on that tr sorry on mm. that trust point which mm. you made earlier which you've just raised mm. as well Sir Keir Starmer has ditched a load of promises mm -hmm. that he made when he was trying to become leader of the Labour Party so what, what guarantee is there that he's going to keep the promises he's making now to voters well this if I were advising the Conservative Party, that, to me, would be where I'd want to put the ball. I would want to be saying, look, yes, the Labour Party's changed. Yes, we can see from the polls, and indeed, when you go around and talk to anyone, the Labour Party doesn't inspire uh, the same fear it did in parts of the country uh, at the last election, but it crucially doesn't inspire the hope it did in other parts of the country. And also, can you really trust that the Labour Party has changed? And I think that will be the big thing that then the Labour Party still doesn't really have an answer for, right? Because you have people on that in that shadow cabinet, like Yvette Cooper, who did not serve under Jeremy Corbyn, people like Darren Jones, who had on your programme, who did not serve under Jeremy Corbyn. Um, and then, of course, you have people like Keir Starmer, who very much did serve under Jeremy Corbyn and said that he would essentially continue on the, you know, the policies and approach and now very much has abandoned and, you know, buried that to the extent that Jeremy Corbyn is not in the Labour Party anymore. And I think that if there is a way back for the Conservative Party, it will be those questions about trust and Keir Starmer. And also, I, 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 I disagree with that because I think, um, you know, everyone thinks politi politicians change their mind and change their argument. And in fact, there's a positive argument to be said, which is people, politicians, if they do change their mind, that's a good thing if they're learning from evidence. I think the better line for the Tories is if things start to get a little bit rosier for the economy, if progress has been made on immigration, I think what they'll want to say is don't risk this because actually on things like the environment, immigration, public finances, Starmer and Labour, you can't really trust them. They are a little bit more radical. So the Tories will really be trying to force that dividing line. But the fact is that Starmer and Labour are playing it so safe. They're hugging very close to the Tory line. It's going to be very difficult for the Tories to do that. So I don't think it'll be successful, he, but let's think he what can't, they'll go for. Starmer can't take the younger voters and the first-time voters for granted. He's got to enthuse them out uh, because they're seen as naturally more Labour supporting. And the danger is in trying to <laughs> placate the centre and the, the more independently minded Tory voter, you're losing that connection with the much more um, uh, passionate and engaged uh, younger voter. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some protesters at Starmer's speeches before, some of the younger climate change activists, so I think that's definitely a, a problem for them. I think, I think the bigger problem for the Conservatives is that they don't really seem to have a single strategy that they are weaponising at the minute. They, they do uh, refer to Keir Starmer as a softy and flip-flop, and there are lots of criticisms around that. They are trying the, the sort of attacks on the economy, but nothing seems to be sticking, partly because, of course, the attacks on the economy blow back in their own face because they are the ones who the economy crashed under. You can argue whether it was them who did it or, or it was because of external factors, but it was certainly during their watch. And so it's very difficult, it's a dangerous game to play, accusing Labour of being people that you don't want to trust with the economy when we are all paying the price for, for what has happened over the last few years. Mm. We're almost out of time. Can I ask you, how does it, your satire change, if at all, if Labour should win the next election? Um, how, how does it... I need to see what they're like first. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, yeah, fair enough. You know, go, I, I mean, I remember doing a live, uh, a weekly uh, topical show during 
the Blair, the height of Blair years, and it was very much looking at his obsession with spin, managerialism, uh, playing safe, uh, that, that sense of control, uh, and being responsible really for you know, something that's, that's engulfed every government since, that centralising of more and more power in number 10, taking it away from ministers. Uh, being very uh, jealous of any minister who has any amount of talent, <laughs> making sure they don't rise to, you know, and, and, and what, what we found, and, and it reached its uh, nadir with, with Liz Truss, is someone coming in unelected and thinking she could rule the world, uh, and she couldn't. There, we're going to leave it. Thank you all very much. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. That's all from us tonight. I'm back tomorrow. See you then. Have a good night.